After the recent uh, interview or debate Ayan Hisi Ali had with Muhammad Hijab, the Muslim community, as always, they didn't understand anything what happened in this debate, and they think, again, as always, that Muhammad Hijab won something. And they made a meme. They say, uh, the Ayan Magan apple polisher for the far right. So, supposedly, Ayan Hirsi Ali is an apple polisher for the far right. Of course, as always when it comes to Muslim apologies, the truth is the complete opposite. That's an unbreakable rule. Whatever a Muslim apologist say, the truth is the diametrical opposite. Always, without exception. So, obviously, Mohammed Hijab is in fact the apple polisher for radical Islam, an Islamofascist that constantly lies, deceives, misrepresents Islamic scriptures, all that to serve Islam without a shred of intellectual integrity. Uh, is Islam inherently misogynistic? Well, first and foremost, of course, there are, misogyny needs to be defined because if it's defined definitionally as it is in the kind of dictionary, the hatred of women, then the answer is very clearly no. Because the Quran very clearly states, God does not let to waste any action of any doer among you, men or women, and that both of you are from one another. And in fact, the Quran explicitly mentions that we cannot have hatred towards any believer because it's mentioned in chapter 59 of the Quran, God do not put any hatred to the believers in our hearts. And that, of course, includes women as well. It is impossible to postulate that Islam is misogynistic from that definitional perspective. Let's see the definition of misogyny. First of all, this is a Greek word. It comes from two Greek words. Miso, hatred, yini, woman. Hatred or aversion to or prejudice against women. So, Mohammed Hijab only addresses the first, hatred. Nobody said, Islam hates women the same way Nazi hated the Jews. Are you serious, my friend? Obviously, we are referring to aversion to or prejudice against women. And yet, Islam brings hatred against non-believing women, women that do not adhere to Islamic pious obsessions. Okay, so how did he answer this question? He said nothing, in other words. He said nothing. Let's return to the question. Does Islam preach and practice prejudice against women? Finitional perspective. But what we will say is, of course, misogyny is a label that is used haphazardly and arbitrarily between people in the West, in discourses, to mean different things. So, of course, neoconservatives or people that are more right-wing or alt-right are excuse, accuse themselves of being misogynistic to, uh, uh, by um, third-wave feminists and so on. And so it really depends on who is the one making the claim and what the robust definition that they have of misogyny is. Wow. Misogyny depends on who is making the claim. What wisdom, eh? So there is no truth, in other words. Uh, truth is dependent to who is making the claim. So, Mohammed Hijab is unable to make a robust argument against Islamic misogyny. So, now definitions became fluid. What is misogyny? Who knows? What is prejudice? One day we might find out. How you define ill treatment? What is morality? Who are we? What is our purpose? What is the purpose of life? Before we are able to say anything against Islamic ill-treatment of women, we must first solve all philosophy from first principles. And what the robust definition that they have of misogyny is. And sometimes that can be ideologically um, uh, kind of inspired. In the case of third-wave feminists, I would say it certainly is. That's why, unfortunately... Uh, even your father has been uh, accused of misogyny. I mean, people in, in, in the West, uh, credible intellectuals and academics have been accused of misogyny just because they believe in a traditional uh, of value, uh, uh, traditional values of, of family system, a complementarian family system. And uh, for this reason, they're accused of misogyny. So, but one has to say this, and I think this is very important, Michaela. Ah, now I get it. You are, in fact, moderation against toxic feminists. Ah, now I get it. Eh? That is what's going on, Mohammed Kitsa. You are, in fact, the moderation 
against the extreme ideas of toxic feminists. Look, look, look the arguments this fool is making. Whoever has a problem with the complete objectification, smashing of personality and identity, institutionalized discrimination, oppression, and clear-cut violations of basic human rights against women in Islam must be a toxic feminist. This is what this idiot is saying right now. In other words, he's, he's making straw false dilemma. You are either toxic feminist, either you are with Sharia. <laughs> no, we don't have to be neither of those. You can either be toxic feminist, either Daniel Hakikatsu. There is no other choice, no, no sane position in between. Of course, as ancient Greeks said, and this quote is actually from my Iceland, in Rodos, they said, moderation is excellence, pan metron ariston. You don't need to be toxic feminist, you neither need to be a toxic patriarchy. Intelligent people in history said, people should be separated only by the content of their character. That highlights the intellectual and spiritual qualities of humans that overstate material differences like wealth, skin color, gender, social status, sexuality, etc. In the same lines were the teachings of Socrates. When we turn our gaze inward in search of self-knowledge, Socrates thought we would soon discover our true nature. And contrary to the opinion of the masses, one's true self, according to Socrates, is not to be identified with what we own, with our social status, or even with our body. Instead, Socrates famously maintained that our true self is our soul. A thousand years later, some illiterate caravan robber in Arabia contested the ideas of Socrates and said, we should value authority over merit and virtue. We should separate humans according to their genitalia, sexuality, and adherence to my cult. Humanity should, in fact, turn to a bee colony. Everybody serving me, the queen. We will have roles. Women will be this. Males will be soldiers. And everybody will serve me, the queen, and my cult. Forget thinking, forget virtue, forget soul, nothing. We are just bees now. You should have roles according to your genitalia. Ah, you have uh, women's genitalia. You are a helper. You have male genitalia. Ah, you are a fighter. <laughs> Everybody serving me. That we believe that there is an equality of value between men and women. We do believe that there is an equality of value between men and women. The Prophet himself, Muhammad, he said, that certainly men are equal to women. Husbands are the protectors and maintainers of their wives because Allah has given the one more strength than the other and because they support them from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. As to those women on whose part you fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them first, next, refuse to share their beds and last, beat them lightly. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance. For Allah is most high, great, above you all. Muslim scholars understand the idiocy and the ill character of Allah and they, they are correcting him. They are correcting the Quran in other words. The true translation is, men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them excel over the other. So, Mohammed Hijab, you started this video saying that uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali doesn't know anything. He's not, she's not qualified to explain Islam. I am the qualified. Yet, you are misrepresenting Islam. Why, my friend? You know, I have to say, uh, Michaela, from the outset here, that unlike the co guest, the ultra crepidarian academic charlatan uh, co guest that you have, the obsequious. Um, apple polisher for the far right, Ian McGann, which is actually her real name. I'm actually qualified to speak about that, which we'll be speaking about today. The prophet said, 
I was shown the hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers were women who were ungrateful. It was asked, do they believe in Allah or they are ungrateful to Allah? He replied, they are ungrateful to their husbands and ungrateful for the favors and good done to them. If you have always been good to one of them, she will say, I have never received any good from you. Okay, and that is Sahid. And that is prejudice, clear cut. Once Allah's apostles went out to the Musalia, uh, blah, 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 then he passed by a woman and he said, O woman, give aims, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you, women. They asked, why is so? He replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husband. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intellect and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. Then the women asked, O oh, Allah's Apostle, what is deficient in our intellect and in our religion? He said, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied, Yes. This is the deficiency in your intellect. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? This is your deficiency in religion. We know that in Islam, the only thing that matters how much you worship Allah, and you don't care about good, bad, virtue, or anything like that, only worship, blind worship. We also know that you are engaging in identity politics and generalizations. Women, <coughs> as it says here, are deficient in religion. Therefore, even in Islam, the value of women are inferior to the value of men. Simple as that. I want reform. I don't think it's right, for example, that a woman gets half the inheritance of a man. Do you think that's right? No, it's, look, I mean, Islamic law, in Islam, woman has got plenty of rights. No, no, hold on, but hold on. Islam, I asked you a question, Ali. I don't think yeah. it's right that in the Quran, in the Quran itself, it states that a woman has half the inheritance of a man. Do you agree that a woman should only get half the inheritance of a man? Of course, because when she gets married, or, or when, she, when, when, when she gets married usually, she gets a half from the husband as well. Yes? So, so you agree that a woman should only have half the inheritance of... So a sister should only have half inheritance of her brother? Of course, of course. Yep. Because when she do, you gets think married, a wife, do you think a wife should obey her husband? She has to obey her husband because yeah. husband has got... You know, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's a hadith, that, you know, if God would have ordered anyone to go to anybody else... To bow, to bow, him, to bow, yeah? Yeah, to bow, yeah, yeah to bow. Yeah. To bow anyone, it would have been a wife would have told... To uh, bow to her husband. Yeah. You know, so so let, let me explain that for listeners. The hadith is actually if God had commanded anyone to bow to anyone other than God, he would command the wife to bow to her husband. Of course. You endorse yes. that. I endorse what do you yeah. mean? Everybody has got to endorse. That's a hadith. That's a very yeah. famous hadith. What about what it's about been... the Quran where it says that a husband has the right to beat his wife? No, if she if she disobeys. Yeah, if she disobeys, he can only beat and uh, then it, the blood should not come and it should not be bruised. Like, you know, like you tap your hand. Oh, you know, how, like, how, you know, how kind of you. So it's okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood? No, not blood and it shouldn't get bruised. Okay, so it's okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood or bruise her? No, but, but you see... Hold on, Ali. Is it okay to beat your wife as long as you don't draw blood or bruise her? Of course, yeah. Like, you know, you tap, you know, you... you, you Mohammed Hitzab, you claim that we have only two alternatives. Either be toxic feminist, either agree with Sharia, with you. No, we have a third alternative. You don't know what you are talking about and you are an apple polisher for Islamofascism and radical Islam. Maybe that is also an alternative. Maybe you are predisposed to present everything related to Islam in a good light. Maybe that's you, not Ayan. Maybe that's you, Mohammed. In the next video, the last video concerning this debate, we will see how Muhammad Hijab misrepresented Islamic scriptures. This charlatan twisted and misrepresented completely Islamic scriptures, although he claimed he is qualified to present Islam accurately. The, the amount of misrepresentation presentation and deception he did is, uh, is amazing. 
Okay, I would have stopped here, but you cannot not ex expose that. 